Right. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about some of the sort of high-level political <laughs> stuff that's been going on um, while Raspberry Pi has been bubbling away at the bottom. Um, the bottom, of course, is where it really matters. It's what happens in schools that really matters at the end of this. And what we've been trying to do with the Raw Society report that I'm going to talk about is try and facilitate from the top um, th this kind of thing at the bottom. And the thing, I mean, there's no real link between the Raw Society report and Raspberry Pi, except they've come at the same time. Um, but what's really exciting is Raspberry Pi has generated uh, the, the best buzz about computers in schools um, since 30 years ago in the days of the BBC Micro. Um, so it's really exciting that these two things are happening at once. But what I'm going to do in the next sort of uh, five to ten minutes um, is tell you where we're up to with the, with, with the boring politics, really. Um, because it's just over a year um, since we issued the Royal Society report on the state of computing in schools. Um, and this report uh, came out at just after the Livingston Hope report, which was driven by Nestor and the uh, games industries. Um, and, of course, the other event that, that had a big influence on government policy in this space was Eric Schmidt's McTaggart lecture, um, when he, Eric Schmidt is the chief executive of Google, when he came and, and, and made some rather open criticisms of the state of computer science in UK schools. And these three things together um, seem to have caused a significant change to take place uh, that we're still seeing worked out at policy level. So, if I can drive this computer. Um, the conclusions that we drew in the Royal Society report, which were broadly in line with those that came out of Livingston Hope and, and the things Eric Schmidt said, so everybody was um, singing from the same song sheet, uh, was that um, the, the ICT curriculum that was then current um, put too many things together in one basket, um, leading to important omissions. There was, it, it was entirely practical to do good computing teaching within the ICT curriculum, okay? and many teachers did that. There was lots of flexibility, um, but there were also too many instances where people sort of took the line of least resistance um, and did stuff that was not really um, inspiring pupils to look to technology for their future careers. So, as a result of um, these recommendations and the other inputs, uh, Michael Gove recognised the problem and announced a consultation and a series of measures that, that have not yet fully resolved even today. Um, but the Royal Society report went into quite a lot of detail on its recommendations, not into details of what the curriculum should be, but that there should be a new curriculum that clearly differentiated three aspects of computing teaching. Um, digital literacy, which is the stuff that everybody was doing in a sense anyway, which is safe use of computer technology. Um, how do you use computers? How do you go on the internet safely? What, what can you do with smartphones? What can you do with tablets? And so on. But alongside that, there should be recognised a rigorous academic discipline called computer science, which is a about how these machines work. It includes programming, what's inside them. It, it includes most of the things you probably want to do with Raspberry Pi. Um, and also, uh, alongside that, the subject of information technology, which is how computers are used for important purposes in business and commerce. And we wanted to make sure that people understood the distinction between these three aspects of computing. So, one of the recommendations that we thought was uh, among the more radical um, was we recommended that the ICT terminology should be dropped. We felt ICT had got itself a rather bad name. We had far too many responses from school pupils to our consultation with the message ICT is boring. Okay? Um, that, that came through time and time again. People had a, a bad impression. Um, of, of, of what was meant by the phrase ICT, and we recommended that it should be uh, replaced by a subject called computing, which included these three distinct aspects of digital literacy, computer science, and information technology. Now, um, the objective, of course, is that 
we'd like every child to have the opportunity to learn computing. Now, opportunity is, is an important phrase here. It doesn't mean that all of this has to be compulsory for everybody because not everybody will want to do all of it. But there should at least be the opportunity in every school for every child who wishes to study computer science to do so. Um, all school pupils should be digitally literate by the time they leave school because you can't live in today's world without um, understanding the technology and how to use it safely. But you should also have the opportunity to extend this knowledge um, into computer science and information technology. And we made recommendations to the Department of Education um, that it should set up uh, suitable schemes of work for these three strands. Um, we also recognised that the qualifications that were in place were not um, achieving the sort of recognition that we felt they should have. Um, universities across the board are a bit lukewarm about uh, the current A-level um, computing and ICT exams, and, and, and those things need revisiting. Um, also, we should have GCSEs explicitly in these subjects of computer science and information technology. Um, and uh, one frequent complaint we got was that the old GCSEs had far too much taking screenshots and writing reports in it. Um, so we feel there should be a, tr uh, you know, we're talking about information technology. There must be a more imaginative way with information technology to examine ability in information technology other than screenshots. Um, now, so we, we, we came out with our key recommendations, which were the replacement of the curriculum. Um, we recognised that the single biggest problem in implementing the sort of changes that we felt were necessary um, would be providing teachers with the skills and resources they need to deliver this. Okay, so the, the, the biggest issue in the whole of this debate is, 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 is uh, the level of knowledge that teachers have and their access to um, development and training so that they can understand uh, the new world we'd like to see them move into. Again, this is not a criticism of all teachers. Okay? There were many teachers doing excellent teaching in this space uh, two years ago, um, but they were not a sufficiently high proportion of all the ICT teachers. So what's happened? Um, a year later, things have moved on. In fact, I think most of us involved in the process of generating this report, um, given the austerity regime that we were working in that was clearly going to dominate political thinking uh, for the immediate future, uh, we were not very optimistic about what could be achieved and how quickly it could be achieved. We felt it was our job to um, make the recommendations of what we thought should happen. Uh, I think we've all been surprised by how quickly things have moved. Um, and partly this is because the message that the government has been hearing from all quarters has been consistent. Okay? I don't believe the world has changed in the last year because you know, I chaired an advisory group or because the Royal Society wrote a report. Um, I think it's because the evidence that we based this report on was available to everybody and the evidence conveyed a, a clear message which everybody's picked up on. So I believe the government has... has has picked up on this message uh, because it's the right message, not because of uh, any authority um, going into these reports. Two minutes. Two minutes. He wants me to shut up already. Um, OK. Um, so what we've seen is the ICT curriculum very rapidly disapplied. That sort of surprised everybody and confused most. Um, we now have a new draft computing programme of study. Notice the programme title has changed from ICT to computing, which is something will be strongly recommended. And the new programme of study has an emphasis on computer science. There's still, this is still subject to consultation. So if you have thoughts on this, um, I recommend you look at uh, the DfE consultation. And even the change of name is, is, is subject to consultation. New computer science GCSEs are coming in. And of course, um, something that we were uh, keen to see is computer science has been included in the EBAC. Um, which is quite a strong message to schools to take this subject more seriously. There's been changes in teacher training. Um, the BCS has been very active in implementing the recommendations. The BCS Academy has been one of the main driving forces um, in carrying these recommendations forward. Um, 
So it, it's awarding teacher training and scholarships on behalf of, the, behalf of the Department of Education. The universities are organising themselves into a network of excellence for the teaching um, uh, computer science, and this is in the CPD area. There's a lot of that going on, um, including very strong activity, from, I'm pleased to say, from my own university here in Manchester. And then kind of slightly randomly, and not particularly linked to any of this, um, Google has just uh, put its money where its mouth is, and with Eric Schmidt having led some of the attack on computer science teaching, it's now uh, putting resources in and funding 15,000 Raspberry Pis for schools, which is quite dramatic. Um, so, this is my last slide. Okay? Um, the clear message through all of this is, is, that, is that we felt we were drifting in ICT into becoming a nation of consumers. We were teaching children how to use and consume technology, and we'd lost the emphasis on creation. Um, and I think what we want to get back to, and Raspberry Pi can play a huge role in this, um, is encouraging the next generation uh, to become creators of technology. I've spent my entire career creating technology. I still, the, the best part of my job is still designing microchips. That's what I do for a living. I'm, I'm a, a, an academic researcher in microchip design. I spent 30 years doing this. Uh, I can't imagine how you can have more fun in your career than, than building computers, right? It's great. I enjoy it. So let's encourage the next generation to get a taste of that fun and excitement. Thank you very much. <laughs>